billions of black uh, people have been trained and educated to follow sincerely the creation narratives written in the Torah, in the Bible, and in the Quran. Our brothers and sisters are sincere and they hope that these are the only books, but unfortunately there are many other books. They have been told uh, to have absolute faith in these books and to put their trust in the religious leaders. They also have been told to use blind faith and never to question anything that is outside of the designated uh, books and to laugh and mock at their own identity and at their own traditions, African spirituality. Even though in these books, which have come to us by way of colonialism and enslavement from Europe, no other race in history has ever been such, uh, gone through such brutalization, destruction, hatred, and war as black people. None. For us, Christian creation doctrines are African myths. This uh, factor of colonization and the creation myths is also separated by the Quran, which says uh, that Allah revealed the Holy Bible, the Torah, Psalms and Prophets, the Old Testament, the Gospel of Jesus. It says Allah revealed it. Uh, these holy books, despite clear evidence that in these books, they have not only destroyed African reality, but have been used to distort our identity, stifle our success and create racial and tribal disunity and wars and fights that they have continuously been used as divine justification to enslave and colonize us. Is it not a must and a real time necessity to reflect and to be serious enough to ask tough questions continuously to ourselves, our leadership and everybody else because the spirituality and religion we adopt is invaluable and an indispensable tool, an essential ingredient and imperative obligatory tool on how we make it as a people or as individuals. Is the Bible inspired? Did the writers of the Bible get their message directly from the creator of the universe? So, if it is from the creator of the universe that gave the inspiration, is it the creator that also included the verses for the destruction of black people on earth. Because this is what the Christian, the Jew, the black Israelite, the Muslim, and others sincerely believe today. This is exactly what they are doing today. So let us look at this issue thoroughly. On the other hand, our brothers have been told that uh, and sincerely believe the Christian stories in the Bible. They believe that they are the oldest. Therefore, they know that Jesus, uh, that Jesus looked like that. And also that Adam and Eve looked like that. They were Europeans. So where did the African come from? If Adam and Eve were European, even so, where did the white men come from if they were black? Millions still suffer from the fallacious fantasy of the case of harm. But for your own information, it is only, it is only the descendants of harm that created civilizations in Kush, Ethiopia, the Bantu, the Midianites, the Sabians, Sabe, Rusabe, in Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Misraim in Egypt, all of that North Africa right up to Libya, and Canaan right up from, from uh, the current state of Palestine, Israel, right across, right into uh, Mesopotamia, down to India, and put the ancient Berbers and Tuaregs and ancient Libyans. There is no other race. It is only the black civilizations, the earth that we have, the news, mathematics, physics, chemistry, history, science, civilization came from the, these races. Not Shemites. Shemites were barbarians if we are to follow this history and if we are to follow archaeology and evidence from ancient times. Japhites were Gentiles living in the islands if we are to follow uh, these uh, truths. Even if you were to make them a black still the black and brown African races in Africa and across the earth were the only civilized people in ancient. So the case of harm is it is not a fact. It is a completely crafted lie that was created by the cultures. Now, not realizing that uh, the case of harm is a wicked joke in which an alcoholic man in a drunken stupor utters a useless case for his inebriated problem. History has proved that the original black race was never cursed. 
also, also even if Adam and Eve were black, we've already asked in stories in the holy books using internal evidence shows us that Moses did not finalize the Torah. Christians believe Moses received and wrote the entire Torah. Five books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Biblical scholars using textual criticism and other techniques have disputed this claim and proved that the Torah clearly was edited well after Moses was gone and dead. So who wrote the Torah? Materials in the Pentateuch are post-Mosaic. So the Torah was not written by Moses. Neither was it canonized during Moses' time. That's a lie. If anyone believes that it was canonized during Moses' time. Anyway, other than that, the big issue, however, in all this is the Genesis conundrum. Where did Moses get the information for Genesis? For he wrote as if he was there during creation, which is impossible. Since we are aware he wasn't present when those events which he mentions occurred, how did he know the creation of matter, the universe, and the first ancestor? Black people in churches, in mosques, in temples, follow pastors, rabbis, and imams in faith, and without ever thinking on these questions. One possible answer to this question is that Moses could have received direct revelation from God as to what happened in the beginning. This is the position of African Christians, Muslims, and Jews. But it is, it is erroneous and it is wrong. The idea that God gave Moses the words of the Torah is not correct. Internal evidence in the Bible demonstrates clearly the exact source where Moses copied the answers. Where Moses saw the answers about Adam, Eve, and Cain, Abel, and the creation and arrival of matter and space and time before we give the answer let us look at the problems within the Pentateuch so two major issues are clear the first two chapters in the Bible Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 contradict themselves violently but then it also says that man is made from dust so is God dust so because of that scholars have realized that also within the books there is also different writing styles where they come up with documentary hypothesis theorem in which they prove that more than one author of the book of Genesis, not even one. Of course, now they are coming back and contradicting themselves and fighting. And the different, different write, uh, writing styles comes out also with the different names of the creator. Some they call the creator Yahweh, some they call him Elohim. So, the scholars, they know the truth in Christianity. Judaism and Islam, they know the truth, the scholars. But the pastor, because if they were to tell the congregants and followers the truth, they would lose income, they would lose their jobs. It's clear what every seminarian knows but is afraid to talk about who wrote, composed, compiled, edited the Torah or the Pentateuch. You can read more from this, these slides. They are scared, scared to their wits. So the documentary hypothesis say, show that scholars still found doublets, e.g. the crossing or crossing of the river Yumsuf, which was not a, a, a river, which was a sea of reeds, which was not red. So following the same logic, they hypothesized a third, source, which is the priestly. And they also found another fourth source, which is deuteronomical. So they noticed that some of the doublets in uh, a logistic were preoccupied with the priests, so they used that to distinguish a priestly source, P, from the rest of Elohistic. It includes almost all of Leviticus. Then scholars noticed that this scheme seemed to make more sense of Genesis numbers, but not of Deuteronomy. So they came up with the Deuteronomic. So four, the Yahwehistic, Elohistic, Deuteronomic, and Priestly. These are completely different writers. So the, the Yahwehist uh, said that God was Yahweh. They use this anthropomorphism. They use humans that they say humans are direct contact with God. They say, speak of the stories of sin and God's promises. This is Yahwehistic. But the Elohist, instead of saying their creator is Yahweh, they say it's Elohim. Uh, instead of saying humans have direct direct contact with God, they say the humans have indirect contact with God. This is in the Bible. It's clear. You have to study. They say God demands righteousness and justice. But the Yahwehistic and the others say no, sacrifice is enough. Sometimes they overlap. But what are the sources? Where are the original manuscripts or texts? They have never been found. The Bible itself tells us 
where those manuscripts and sources are. It's quite clear, straightforward. The source of the Bible stories are the stones and the walls in Africa. What the documentary hypothesis reveals is amazing. The Bible, as indicated already, tells us where Moses borrowed the creation myths that he used to write the books of the Bible. If ever the billions of our black brothers and sisters sit up and ask this, they will realize that in the Bible the Christian creation doctrines are African myths. Because Moses grew up learning these in Africa if Moses ever lived. Moses in Africa, you can watch this video where it is proved beyond reasonable doubt. Also, in Acts 7, 21, 22, we are told clearly with no doubt that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. <coughs> you can't tell me that if Moses learned in Egypt, learned in Africa, all the wisdom of the Egyptians, all the wisdom of the Africans, he did not write even one thing from the stone walls and hieroglyphics we have. Therefore, the wisdom of ancient Africans in Egypt is the source of the biblical Torah, Islamic creation narratives, and Jewish thinking or Jewish philosophy. But the vital issue is that they twisted everything and reversed everything. This is a fact. So let's prove by going to the sources of education, the centers of education in Hamid that incorporated all African creation myths. The Temple University initiation system trained all who were there or initiated about these truths. The, these four centers include Unu, a city that, that was known as Unu, this one. But they changed in the Bible, they called it On. And also the Greeks called it Heliopolis, but its original name is Unu, or Bantu, or Unu. The Europeans have changed it. The original occasion displays the ori origins of matter, of time, of space, and everything. In modern dog, in modern times, the Dogon priests' teaching have shown that matter came from waves of unseen, massless materials. Capture that unseen, massless materials, materials with no mass, with no gravity. They designate this as nu or waves. Proof that this is not only a dogonite thinking or understanding or philosophy. There is a wild, wide African philosophical truism about this in terms of pictograms, the chevron waves. This is the chevron wave of the dogons. The art of affecting consciousness in the cosmic matter there. No more. The primordial waves as perceived. And there in Great Zimbabwe, the chevron, the N, this chevron. Straight clear forward. There is in Uganda. You see the chevron there. In the basket. In what we what we do as Africans. It's in our consciousness. Bantus call this. Izinto. Zinu. Nu. Nun. Or Masai Sai. That's it. So when you say Masai. Then Sai again. It's waves. It's the keepers of the truth. That's a fact. So. Today quantum scientists and astrophysicists. They've suddenly. Come up and say that they have discovered these anti-gravity massless waves. But we know that all this which they say was already known by our ancestors. So like Moses too, the modern scientists are discovering things that they have learned in ancient Hamet, in ancient Africa. It's proof beyond reasonable doubt. So in the beginning there was nothing or Nunu waves of massless matter. We call it material. For the sake of no, we can't have any other words. Oh, Zunu, if you want. For there are some who say, I use your own language. So I've used it. Izinto. A mound of earth rose from moon. Izinto. Oh, Zunu. And upon it, a tomb or a tema, black people. Let a man, a man or a moon or a son created himself. He did not want to be alone. So he masturbated or spat. In other words, he used the force and the friction to produce shoe, which is air. Shoo! And a moisture. Tafunyatu. A chew and tafunyatu gave birth to the guvu or guvu meta f. Guvu f and sky nyute or nyata. 
which means you, you can get wet. Gap and Nut were separated by Shu, creating our world, the children of Nut and Gap and Osari and Osari. This is the setup, a tomb where you get atom and all the uh, physics you get from. So the other center was Hermopolis. The Greeks again distorted it, this city, and called it Hermopolis, but its name is Kmun or Kamunu or Kimuntu or Komunu or Kwemunu. This is the truth. The Egyptologists want to tell us that it means the city of eight. That's not correct. Act. The eight we know, Kamun, it has to do with Umuntu, with the wand. Heliopolitan creation means a tomb was considered, or Atema, black, was considered to be the first god. Having created himself, sitting upon a mount, Ben Ben. The word Ben Ben is Benyu, Benyu, which means alive or living, identified with the earth or material itself, which means he inserted his presence inside matter using Nyai, 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 or waves, or Masai Sai. This is the truth. These are facts. So you get this universal flood, which is the source of a uh, uh, weightless uh, or massless isn't or things, space or infinity, darkness and invisible winds. So we got the main fight uh, theology, which is the next one. If Moses was educated in Africa, in Egypt, he, he would have studied main fight theology. These narratives were older than the Bible by thousands and thousands of years. So from the book stolen Lakers, we learn that Memphis was the ancient capital of ancient Huatikaputa, so-called Egypt. It was lo it is now located 20 kilometers south of Giza. According to the Memphite theology to a very early period in ancient Egyptian history, the time when the first dynasties had made their way up from Marua. You can read a lot from this intellectual adventure of men by Francofort. The summary therefore says water is the source of all things. The waves. Water here represents the waves. Immaterial waves. Non-seen waves. And the creation was accomplished by the unit of two creative forces. Puta and Atom or Atema. And the unit of mind and the speech and the fire and the opposing principles to control everything. And the elements in creation which were fire, atom, water, noon, earth, puta or tat geneni and air. You can study more from that. What we see here is thus. Uh, that from the Memphite theology, we read the following. Thus it is said of Puta, he who made all and created the gods. He is tat tenen, he who gave birth to the gods. And from where everything came forth. And as so as it was recognized and understood that he was the mightiest of the gods. Puta was satisfied after he had made all things and all divine words. It's clear. So everything that was good. They copied it from there. Then the Shabaka stone, founded by this uh, king, the African king, black king, Shabaka, or Shabaka, you, he, Puta, gave birth to the gods straight, quite of obvious. So the di nine divine powers were found in these cities. The map of creation origins that Moses adopted. Memphis on Memphis Kumunu or Tennis. So in conclusion, therefore, as billions of our black people continue to be trained and educated to follow sincerely the creation narratives written in the Torah, the Bible, and Quran, they are never told that these stories were plagiarized by Moses and others from ancient African temples. That's where you should go and study and read and discover for yourself. In fact, they are taught to sing songs that denigrate themselves through denigrating Pharaoh as an oppressor of God's chosen people. Yet the Bible in Acts 7, 22 tells the truth that Moses was never inspired by God to write the creation narrative in the Torah, but edited what he had learned from African mysteries. We have given you the least tiny of that. The modern Egyptologist diverts millions by portraying a stateless ancient Egyptian empire, really teaching humans that Egypt is indeed in Africa, but they say it is somewhere. In the hands of those who, of those who hate black people, uh, these narratives have been used to colonize and enslave and brutalize mentally black people across the whole earth and make black people European slaves. It's time to wake up 
and smell the truth and apply it in our lives. For these African myths are our true religion and spirituality. The choice is yours. Europe or Africa, slavery or freedom, truth or propaganda. Subscribe to our channel, Hamiti Hebrew Ethics, it's preacher Rabbi L.M. Tumizulu, propagating the real solutions to modern challenges and saying the African reality is true maker of the universe, the creator of our ancestors. This is, you can contact us on lmtumizulu at gmail.com, shown here. Thank you, Siabonga Tatenda, till we meet again. Have a good time with the world.